In this presentation, we will record a transaction related to restricted assets being released from restriction within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop. Here we are in our QuickBooks file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown and selecting the open windows list. Let's take a look at Excel to see what our objective will be. We are now on 5E, so if we scroll down to the items in 5E, you'll recall last time we recorded expenses. What we're going to say now is some of those expenses qualified us to release some of the assets that were restricted from restriction. So we got to do that transaction to release the assets from restriction to show that. Now this is one of the more kind of confusing type of transactions because when you see it in a two-dimensional kind of GL trial balance, it can be a little bit confusing in terms of uh, what is happening? How are we going to record this release from restriction? When you see it in terms of one more column, as we do in our statement of activities here, we'll note it'll be a little bit easier to see because we'll say that it's going to be coming out of the restricted column and into the items that are without restriction, unrestricted items. So what we're going to do then is say that the unrestricted items need to be going up. We're going to record kind of like income in the unrestricted items and then the ones with restriction will be going down to do that we're going to use gl accounts so if we think about just our trial balance we're going to use the accounts here they're going to be this really long name on our trial balance we'll have to adjust this or shorten it within quickbooks because it won't permit us to have such a long name it's called net assets released so there's going to be net assets released assets minus liabilities is the net assets all these income statement accounts close out to equity or the net assets so that's why it's named that satisfaction of purpose restriction so the purpose of the restriction has now been satisfied through the expense and therefore we're going to unrestrict it now we have one of these with without donor restrictions here same name with uh, donor restrictions the one without donor restrictions needs to be going up we can think about these as kind of like income statement accounts therefore it's going to go up in the credit direction this one needs to be going down the one that has restrictions we can think of it kind of like an income statement account and therefore it has a credit balance to make it go down we'd have to do the opposite or debit it so therefore we're going to credit the one without restriction debit the one with restriction so if we record it then it's going to look like this we got we're going to we got the 7800 are the amount that was qualified we're going to say net assets uh with restrictions are going to be the debit i'm going to say this is going to be the debit up top 7800 and the one without restriction is going to be the credit so i'm going to scroll back up top and there's the credit now if we look at this and just i again kind of a two-dimensional or, or just a three column kind of setup it obviously nets itself out no effect on the bottom line net income what's the purpose of doing it because when we assign the classes between the restricted and unrestricted as we basically see in the statement of activities then it'll break out and we'll see that the ones uh, with restriction then uh, will be going down here this is now in plus and minus format the one without restriction will then be going up so let's see what this would look like in uh, quickbooks this is one of the more kind of complicated type of transactions to enter into the system for a few different reasons one is we don't really want to use the um, this format in terms of the journal entry because if I do that in QuickBooks, I can't use the job function as easily. And therefore, we have to write basically a zero check, which is a little bit funny of a transaction. So let's take a look at it. We'll go back to QuickBooks. And we're not going to do the journal entry. Let's just see why. If we go to the company drop down and make journal entries, we could do the debits and credits. But I want to assign not only the classes here, but also the jobs. Because I want to track which restriction is there. Can't really can't do that in the journal entries therefore we need to use some type of form to in essence enter a journal entry there's no form that's set up specifically for this for this process therefore we need to pick one the best one that'll work let's write a check so we'll write a check to do this process and if it opens here i'm going to go to this account or this little space to open the check and double click on it and that'll take you to a check now, I'd rather not write this to the checking account. It wouldn't really matter because it's a zero check, but I'd rather add a new account, just call it a clearing checking account. So that'll tell me that it's always going to be zero. I'm using that account to enter these transactions that should be zero based. So I'm going to say I want a new account. I'm going to set it up as a bank account type. We're just going to call it a clearing account. Clearing account. I'm going to say tab 
we'll say save and close. There it is. So now we're going to this separate account. It's going to be a zero check. I'm not going to be writing it to anybody. I'm just using this as a journal entry type of transaction. Then we're going to go to the expense accounts down below. I'm going to name these expense accounts net assets released. And then I'm going to, I'm going to call this one restricted. So net assets release restricted. I'm going to set this up. I'm going to say tab, set it up. It's going to want to set it up as an expense but I don't want it as an expense. I want it either as income or other income. You can kind of debate on wh which way you want to uh, put it on. If we look at our Excel sheet, you'll note that over here in Excel, when we generate our report, which is going to be the statement of activities, it's up top in uh, basically the, the revenue area, but you might want to put it in other revenue. It might be nice to have a subtotal. So let me show you what that would look like. If I go back to QuickBooks, I'm going to say it's it's income, but I'd rather have it in other income kind of at the bottom of the report to see that to see that. So I'm going to record it as other income here to see what that'll look like. We're going to say continue. So then we'll continue on that. We will set up this account. Let's make this a little bit larger so we can see the restricted item. So we're going to say this is restricted and we're going to say that the amount was going to be for, of course, that 7,800. So 7,800 restricted. Now, how do you know there's going to be one that's going to be negative and positive? Notice that this amount in the check is going to be zero. So if you think about this in terms of debits and credits, how can we use this to make a journal entry? The check's got a zero transaction in it. If it was a check, it would be decreasing the cash account, which would be a credit. Therefore, any positive number here is going to be a debit. 7800. That's going to be a debit uh, over here, which would be kind of increasing an expense but we're going to an income statement account that would be decreasing the income statement account. That's what we want to do to the restricted item. We're going to decrease, have like a negative income account, a contra income account for the restricted. And then the unrestricted is going to be going up. Therefore the net assets released. And then we're going to say unrestricted tab, set that up going to be a other income type of account other income and okay and save and close that's going to be negative 7800 which actually is going to be increasing the income statement account so you kind of got to mull this over to see what the debit and credit will be because we're, we're basically using a check uh, in order to do it then we're going to think about what the classes are just going to follow once we get these going the right way and you could do this a few different times because you can, if you mess it up and go the wrong way, you'll check the reports and then come back and fix it. And, you know, and, and so we're going to say this is going to be restricted. The classes then are going to be restricted. It's going to follow that. And then the unrestricted, the class is going to be unrestricted. That'll put it in the proper account. So once again, I'm going to use uh, the, the two accounts here, restricted, unrestricted, and the classes. Then we need to consider what's going to happen to the job. Because you'll recall we had the job here and now the, the job item, we want to track the amount that is restricted. So the amount that's going to be decreasing should be going to the job. So in, in other words, this 7,800 is actually decreasing uh, that income account. So this needs to be applied to the applicable job, which I'm going to say is the school supplies. These are the restricted items we have. I'm going to say the school supplies. I'm not going to assign the job to this one because it's been released from restriction. This is the one that's going to be decreasing the job. So we're going to close it out of there. So this is, this is more of the more complex kind of transaction. If now we're going to bounce back to the reports and see what happens. And again, if something goes the wrong way uh, and we don't, we, we messed it up and went the wrong way, then you can go back in here and just adjust it uh, once you see what happens. So what's our objective to see what happens? Once we record this, if we just look at, at the profit and loss, it's going to, one account's going to go up and one account's going to go down. We look at the profit and loss by class, however, we're going to see the amount that's going to be unrestricted is going to go up in, in income and the amount that's going to be restricted then will go down in terms of an income account. Then we're going to go to the jobs and to see which actual item uh, what should be decreasing the job because it's no longer restricted, therefore decreasing uh, the restricted item in the job. And, and we should see that decrease here. So that's our goal. That's what we expect to see. So we're going to say save and close. Yes. 
and then let's go to our reports. I'm going to close this out too. I'm going to go to the reports drop down up top. We're going to go to the accounting and taxes and take a look at our trustee trial balance. We'll change the dates up top from 010120 to 123120, January through December. Then we'll go to the customized reports. We're going to go to the fonts and numbers. We're going to change the font. We're going to change it to 11 and say, OK, yes, and OK. Then if we scroll down to the bottom, we have our two accounts here. Notice that they're on the bottom because it's in order by uh, account type and we said other income instead of income therefore it's not up here it's going to be down at the bottom it comes in and out so it will just it's it's going to be a net uh net neutral type of transaction to the net income from this perspective however if we want to run a profit and loss by class as let's check that out reports uh company and financial and we run a profit and loss by class report changing the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. And I'll change the size, customize reports, fonts and numbers, change the font, 11, okay, yes, and then okay. Then notice it's not in income up top, but if we scroll down and put in this other subcategory, and that, you know, you could put it down here or you can put it up top in the income. We're trying to mimic, in essence, if I go back to this report, in Excel, something that looks uh, like this. You'll note that we have the statement of activities. It's up top uh, transferring between these two, but you might like it. You know, I kind of like to see it uh, at the bottom to have the breakout of the actual income and then the items that are going from restricted to unrestricted basically down below here. So notice what's happening on the restricted items. Uh, it's going down. Now, we might want to see this in the reverse order. We might want to see unrestricted and then restricted. How can we do that? How can we have the unrestricted on the left as we do on our, on our report in Excel? We could go to the lists group. We can go to the uh, class lists. And then I'm just going to pull the unrestricted up. So I'm just going to take that one on the, on the diamond, pull it up top. So unrestricted is now first. Then we can go back to the profit and loss by class. Now we have unrestricted, then restricted. The unrestricted, you can see it's decreasing and, and there it goes down. Now it's decreasing past zero because we're only running this report for the current time period. And this was a restriction that happened due to something prior to this time period. Then on, on the unrestricted side, we have this increase. So now we have the increase in basically uh, the bottom line number, which is like the net income number. It's going to be called net income in, in the QuickBooks uh, report. So that's not actually revenue, you know, really generated this time. It's just, and if you look at the total, of course, it zeroes out, it zeroes out. We're taking it out of something that was restricted and putting it into unrestricted due to the fact that we fulfilled the requirement for whatever the restriction was. It wasn't a restriction that happened in this time period, in this year. It was a restriction that happened in a prior time period that we have now fulfilled at this point. Now, we also want to see this restricted item. Well, what was the restriction? This gives us the the items by by all the items that were restricted for this time period now we want to know what exactly was restricted to do that we're going to go to the profit and loss by job so i'm going to go to the, to the reports up top company and financial we'll take a look at the profit and loss by job changing the dates up top from 010120 to 122 123120 then i'll change the font customizing the reports fonts and numbers and change the font size to 11 and say okay yes and okay so there we have it uh and then here we have our jobs now so the one that changed was this supplies job so notice again i could i could minimize this report or collapse it and then uncollapse it this is the one we're considering if i want to remove this stuff to the right i can go to the customize reports filter we can go to the job status. So we're going to go down to job status. And then I'm going to select the status as in progress and OK. And so there we have it. If I collapse this report, then we have the amount of the 6889 going to the profit and loss by class. And there's the 6889 in the restricted profit and loss by job. Then if I want the detail, I can uncollapse this item. It froze on me. So it does that from time to time. If I make this a little bit larger, sometimes it unfreezes. 
but no, not right now. So I'm going to close this back out. You close it back out when that happens. Go back into the reports, uh, company and financial. We're going to go to the profit and loss by job. Change the dates. 010120 to 123120. Change the font size. Fonts and numbers. Change font size. 11. Okay. Yes. Okay. So there we have the detail. Then we can customize the reports. Filter. Filter by job status. And then we want just the ones in progress. Okay. And there we have that information. So notice this one is going is going down. Now what we want to do is see the entire life of the jobs that are basically open, that are still uh, open jobs that, that haven't been fulfilled, right? So what I want to do is take this back to to the you know back forever basically to all the open jobs that are currently in progress that you know that we want to track at this time that haven't com completely filled aren't now down to zero so then we're going to say let's make this as of one nine we only have two years of data and that'll give us the item so this was our beginning balance there in the school supplies that was open and then we had the uh, amount that's now removed from that seven eight zero zero bringing it down taking it from the restricted item to unrestricted. Now at the end of the of the period, note that we're going to have to track the items. This will show us the amount in net in the net position that should be restricted in the balance sheet as opposed to those that should not. So this will help us. This report then will help us when we go to the reports drop down, company and financial and take a look at the balance sheet. Let's take a look at the balance sheet and we're going to take a look at this as of 12:3120. Going to customize the reports, fonts and numbers, change the font size to 11, OK, yes, and OK. Scrolling back down, there's our amount that's that's uh, restricted versus unrestricted. Here's our net income. Now the net income is going to roll into the unrestricted. So if I then go one more day up to the next year, it rolls into unrestricted. And we're going to have to then determine and make an adjusting entry for the amount that needs to be unrestricted versus the amount that is restricted that is now in the equity section or the net assets section. To do that, we'll be helped by the profit and loss by job, which will help us to determine that information given that the jobs that are basically open that we're tracking as restricted items. So we'll have to do an adjusting entry. In this case, if it was to stop now, to adjust the restricted amount to that 227,320.